It's quarter to ten, we're here at Currymore and we're here today to find out what the flood operatives are doing. So I'm here today with Ken Hooper on Currymore and I'm just going to find out some information about the store. So, Hi. <laughs> Hi. Yes, yeah, so I'm a specialist team member uh, for the operations delivery team. So we have a team at the moment doing some flood recovery works on uh, Hook Bridge Spillway. Uh, the works uh, consist of removing the old timbers on top of the uh, spillway and replacing them with new timbers. So they're replacing them from last year's. Last, last year's, year, yeah, last year's flood. So how often does that normally happen? Flood out and to overcome. It varies from year to year, depending on the rainfall, obviously. Uh, last year, uh, the moor out there was flooded during the summer and winter, so most of the summer and winter months, uh, due to the exceptional year we had last year. So what time does your day normally start? Yeah. My day starts half past seven in the morning. Um, usually first thing at the office, we go in, uh, and if we're in a flood event, we'll be looking at some of our systems, top like swamp tail, to see what's going on with all the river systems. We finish about quarter past four, uh, unless we've got in a flood event. Um, so it can be a challenging day. Uh, it's faced with so many different challenges. What we do, whether it's incident response or maintenance activities. Just walked down from where we started after our interview with Ken um, and we're now just going to find out what the flood of the have been up to today. My name is Jim Barry, new team member. About 10 days from the start to finish but we've got this great pool of mud and everything that's in here and out by the outside the bridge. This, this remaining bit will be about another six days away. We're off now to Currymore Pumping Station to find out how it's all operated down there. So we're just about to take a look inside the pumping station. sitting down in the sump that's all down here. We have to pump it back up to the top of the engine so everything at the top is all lubricated and can work. It's all done by hand. How's your hair? And just throw through this filter around back into the pump. That way. Now. Right then. And then we can start it. Showing us the newer pumps, Tim decided to show us the old pump that's now not in use.
And this is the original pump that we had back in the 1864. This went in, all nicely built, all new, all put in by hand, no machinery. 1864, this one ran for 100 years. I'm a lead team member from the Warmly Depot, Bristol Haven team. So what time does your day normally start? Half past seven in the morning. In the mo that's quite early. So do you normally come out straight away or do you stay? Normally go early? to the yard, pick up a trailer or any tools that we might need for the day and find out you might be working with someone else or there might be an incident to come in overnight that you may have to go to instead of the job you were planning on going to. The Environment Agency clears about 30 or 40 screens across Bristol and this is typical of the sort of screen that we find that debris from vegetative matter, trees, branches, leaves, but also a lot of urban debris like um, trolleys, motorbikes, all kinds of other paraphernalia which end up on these screens. And if the screen wasn't there, the culvert would block, could cause flooding. My name's Sam Wilkins. Uh, I've been on the air two and a half years. Uh, started, I think it was September two years ago. It's quite good, a lot of variety of different jobs to do on here, and um, yeah, I'm in, enjoying it. That's it for our trip to the Bristol Trash Screens. Next, we'll be heading to Clevedon to catch up with Melbourne. Here at Clevedon, at the tidal defence, which you can see here, this massive great concrete wall to stop the tide coming in and flooding all 4,000 properties of Clevedon. And our guys would come down here on a high tide and check the defences are in good condition. So why does the wall go like this? Because as the wave rolls in from the Severn Estuary, the energy is taken out by hitting the front wall and then it curves up underneath this wall and then rolls back on itself rather than eroding the defences and flooding all these poor people in Cleveland. We've just been to Cleveton Seafront to learn about the tide and um, the flood defences that they have there and we're now off to Perks Walk. walk and we're looking down on Clevedon floodplain so what do the gang typically do when they come here to check? Okay so on a typical high tide you would get a gang here which is two men with a Land Rover they would come out to the sea defences to make sure that they're okay that they haven't been damaged at all by uh, previous storms or vandalism or anything like that they would make sure that when the tide does come in there's no overtopping. If, if they saw waves breaking over the top, they would then phone back into our control centre to say we are the potential for flooding in Clevedon. And they would make sure that there's no debris, trash, the shopping trolleys, television sets that have been thrown in the river that are potentially blocking open the flat valves. Because if the flat valve is open, 
then the tide can come in. Melvin has now arranged a meeting for us so that we get to see some of the flood defence machinery. We've just arrived at Lanyo in Tickenham where we're going to speak to Ian about his day. So what do you normally do in your day? Uh, during the summer months, uh, most, of, most of my time would be taken up um, doing what we call um, weed cutting, which is removing the bed weed and everything else that you can see here from the, from the channels of the watercourses to aid flood water evacuation, obviously at times of high rainfall, and also to provide water to all of the neighbouring land so that the um, livestock and everything that the landowners have here have fresh drinking water and also it provides, it fills all the ditches creating a wet fence boundary between all the land to stop all the animals running away. So that's what you're going to be doing today then? It is, indeed. So that's it for our journey with the flood defence officers. We've learnt that their work is not only invaluable to the safety of our houses, but to the protection of the community.